Thank you very much for, for inviting me. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, so I will talk about the Alman Jezer Tarsi uh, conjecture and uh, its joint work with uh, with Janos Nagy, uh, with whom we started this research together. And then uh, Ishmael Tomon uh, also joined us. Uh, so some of the results uh, are also joined with him. Uh, so first I would uh, explain the statement of the conjecture. Um, it states that uh, if we have a field finite or infinite, um, doesn't matter, of size at least four and um, an invertible matrix M over this field, then we can always find an over zero vector uh, such that its M image is also uh, an over zero vector. Uh, this question was first asked by Zsezer in 1981 in, in, in Hungary. Uh, I think he might have asked it specifically for the five element field, so the uh, second smallest um, case here. Uh, while Alon and Tarsi also arrived at this conjecture independently when we were trying to generate some properties of sparse graphs to, to more general matroids. Uh, maybe I write the statement on the board because I will mention a couple of other statements uh, and not, not to forget it. So, the Alon and Tarsi conjecture, which is the main topic states uh, that uh, if M is non-singular, then we can find a vector X such that X is uh, nowhere zero and its M image is, uh, is also nowhere zero. Uh, so here, uh, first a quick comments about the requirements. Uh, two fields were excluded uh, because in those two cases, the conjecture would be false. Um, if you take the two element field, then there is this very small counter example. Uh, this is a, an invertible matrix over F2. And uh, in this case, uh, there is only one can candidate for uh, an over zero vector, namely vector one one. Uh, but uh, the first entry of its uh, image uh, happens to be a zero. Uh, so this is a counter example. And there is also a small counter example for the three element field. Uh, here again, uh, there is a counter example of size two by two. Uh, this is an non-singular matrix. Uh, here we have uh, four candidates for X. Uh, both of these can be either plus one or minus one. If uh, the two entries of X uh, are equal to each other, then uh, in the image, the second, second entry uh, is zero. And if the two entries of X uh, are different from each other, so one of them is a plus one, the other one is a minus one, then uh, the second entry in the image is zero. Uh, so the statement would be false for the three element field, field as well. Uh, uh, we require them to be non singular, and it's uh, also clear that uh, some non singular condition is, uh, is essential. For instance, for the zero matrix, uh, the statement would be trivially false, or if uh, M contains an everywhere uh, a full zero row, then uh, in the M image of X, uh, the corresponding entry is, is a zero. Uh, so some non-singularity condition is, is required. Uh, so we, we have this requirement. Uh, I mentioned some early observations and, and, and partial results. Uh, the first one is uh, an observation that uh, if the field uh, happens to be infinite, then, uh, then the conjecture holds. In fact, we can also think about the conjecture in the following way. Uh, we have uh, two bases uh, in a finite dimension of vector space over F, uh, say the, the standard basis and another basis. And we are looking for a vector X um, for which uh, all the entries in the standard basis and uh, all the coordinates of X in, in the other basis uh, should, should all be different from zero. Uh, and uh, it's very easy to check that uh, for infinite fields, uh, we can find such a vector. And there was a much more interesting partial result uh, obtained already by, by Alan and Tarsi, uh, which states that uh, if the size of the field is uh, a proper prime power, so it's, it's not a prime, then, uh, then the conjecture holds. They use the uh, polynomial method to, uh, to get this result. Uh, but the case of uh, prime fields uh, happens to be very much different. Uh, so after the result of Alan and Tarsi, uh, 
in the case of uh, prime fields, where the prime is being at least five, uh, remained open. Uh, before continuing with uh, the knowledge of the conjecture itself, I, I mentioned some related uh, questions. Uh, there are a bunch of questions in the area that are uh, closely connected to each other. In certain cases, uh, there are direct implications uh, between uh, the, the statements. In other cases, it is expected if uh, that is an advance in one of the questions, then uh, there could probably be uh, a progress in, uh, in, in, in the other questions. Uh, so one such related question is the, the permanent conjecture of Kahn, which um, states that uh, the permanent rank of uh, the matrix M, N, so we write two copies of M next to each other, uh, is N whenever M uh, is uh, an M by M non-singular matrix. So here the permanent rank is the size of the largest pair sub matrix uh, with, uh, with non-zero permanent. And in fact, uh, from the argument of anon tarsi it follows that uh, the permanent conjecture uh, implies the analogy tarsi conjecture. Uh, so this is a natural way to uh, proceed beyond the Tarsi conjecture. Um, some of the uh, partial results were obtained through the permanent conjecture that I will uh, explain later. Uh, we proceed uh, conjecture in a different way. Uh, so, so that's all about the, the permanent conjecture. Uh, now I just wanted to mention it. Another related problem is the so-called additive basis conjecture of Zizer, uh, Linear, Payan, and Tarsi, uh, which states that uh, for each prime, uh, there is a constant uh, C1, might, which might depend on the, on the prime, uh, such that if you take C1P uh, uh, linear basis, and we take the union of the basis vectors as a, as a multi-set union, uh, then this is always uh, an additive, additive basis. Uh, an additive basis is in fp to the n is a subset uh, such that uh, if you take all the subset sums of b, uh, we, we get everything in fp to the n. Or to see it in a slightly different way, uh, we can express all the elements of fp to the n uh, as a zero one linear combination of the, of the elements of b. So once again, uh, here, uh, here B is a multi set, uh, so the same vector can be uh, contained multiple times. For instance, if uh, I, take the, I take P minus one copies of the very same basis, uh, then the implica implication is, uh, is clearly, clearly correct. Uh, but uh, the additive basis conjecture states that uh, we can take any uh, uh, union of uh, C1P, uh, any B basis. Uh, this uh, conjecture is uh, still uh, widely open, and uh, at some point, uh, Segedi formulated a weaker version of it. Uh, it states that uh, there is a constant, uh, again, which might depend on, on the prime p, such that if we take the union of c to p many bases in uh, fp to the n, uh, then we can express each vector uh, in the, the vector space fp to the n as a linear combination of the elements of the multi set uh, B, which is the union of the basis, uh, where the coefficients uh, can be anything except zero. Uh, so, in case of the additive basis conjecture, we want to use only two coefficients, zero or one. In the weak version, uh, we exclude just one coefficient. Uh, or, or the other p minus some coefficients can be used. Uh, so, so here uh, it's not important which way we for with them. Uh, so, just the interesting point is just that here we can use uh, two coefficients. Uh, here we are happy to use uh, p minus some coefficients. Um, and uh, if p is larger than three, then uh, then this is indeed uh, weakening. So, zero is not allowed. That's all. Uh, sorry, and you are free with FP. Uh, sorry. So, so you say AB is in one through P minus one, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, the, the, the coefficient, yes. So we can so, use so only zero is not allowed. So yes, yes, but uh, the important point is that uh, we, we are happy to use uh, a P minus one element coefficient set. So it could be 
the set of the values between zero and p minus two, uh, it, it doesn't matter just uh, here, it might be natural uh, to, to exclude zero. Yeah. Uh, here, if you want to think about subset sums, only exclude zero in this big conjecture. Uh, here, here we exclude zero, but uh, we could exclude uh, any other element. Only the size of the BD coefficient set that we can use is, uh, is important. Uh, so here uh, we can use two uh, coefficients. Uh, here we can use uh, almost all the coefficients uh, just with one manifestation. Uh, so the yeah, so only the size matters. So this is a direct consequence of the of the more general version. Uh, one more problem that I mentioned from the there is the uh, nowhere zero strip of conjecture of that. Uh, which says that uh, the graph is four edge connected, then uh, it admits uh, an over zero three flow. Uh, so, so that let me define this. So if k is an integer, then we say that the mod k orientation in a graph is an orientation of the edges, such that for each vertex, the uh, in degree of the vertex and the up degree of the vertex is the same mod k. And uh, let's say that the constant uh, C3k is the smallest positive integer, such that if we assume that the graph is uh, C3k edge connected, uh, then uh, there is always a mod k orientation. Uh, so with this notation, that conjecture states that uh, the constant uh, here is, is equal to four. Jeje um, formatted a more general version of it for every odd k, uh, not just for three. Uh, so if here we write k plus three, we get back that's conjecture, but Jeje's uh, conjecture was formatted for, uh, for the, the odd numbers. And uh, he also has this uh, weaker version where this constant uh, exists at all, which uh, is not uh, a priori clear uh, from the definition of it, uh, so it was not perfectly well defined. Uh, the existence of uh, such a constant is, is not clear, but it was uh, proved in uh, 2012 by Thomas and that uh, the weak version is correct. Uh, so there exists uh, such a constant. Uh, Lovas, uh, Lovas Junior, um, Thomas Sambu and Zhang uh, did a quantitative bound uh, on uh, C3k, which is uh, weaker than the conjecture bound from the circular flow conjecture of, uh, of Zizer. And uh, even more recently, Hanley, Zhu, and Wang uh, proved uh, that uh, the strong version is, uh, is actually false if, uh, if k is large enough. Uh, so such a constant exists. Uh, it's not extremely large, but uh, it may be larger than 2k minus 2 if, uh, if k is not very small. Um, and uh, why I, I'm mentioning this, and uh, also the reason for using these indices here, uh, C1, the additive basis conjecture to C3, is that here there is also a connection. If the additive basis conjecture, which, uh, which is open, uh, happens to be true, uh, then uh, uh, we have uh, this bound uh, on, on this constant. If, uh, if C1P is the a constant from the additive basis conjecture. Uh, a more general version of the analogy expressive conjecture uh, is the so-called choosability conjecture. Uh, so in case of the analogy Tars conjecture, we just want to avoid uh, the coordinate zero. Uh, in the choosability version, we may want to avoid uh, more forbidden coordinates. Uh, so let's say that uh, a matrix is AB choosable if uh, for any choice of sets uh, Xi, subsets Xi of the field, each of size A, and uh, subsets YJ of the field, each of size B, we can always find a vector X uh, in the direct product of the sets Xi, such that it's uh, M image uh, Y is contained in the direct product of the y's. Uh, so this means that for each entry of x and for each entry of uh, its m image mx, uh, we can uh, uh, come up with a list of uh, forbidden coordinates. 
in case of x, uh, each such size, uh, each uh, such forbidden co uh, coordinate size uh, must be, be equal to, to a, but uh, we can choose different element sets. Uh, and we can also do so for the m image. Uh, here we can choose b element uh, sets uh, that, that might be different. Uh, so one generalization, which is the, the less important one, is that we can uh, we can choose the forbidden coordinates uh, independently uh, for each of the uh, n entries of, of x and, uh, and mx. Uh, the more important point is that uh, we, we may forbid uh, more than uh, more than one values. So in case of the the longitudinal classic conjecture, uh, both a and b are equal to p minus one, and uh, all the the sets are the uh, Sets x, i, and y, j are equal to the uh, non zero elements of the field. Therefore, it's proved that uh, if uh, the field is uh, of characteristic two, uh, so there is this strong requirement here, uh, then every non singular matrix is uh, k plus one f minus k choosable. And um, we formulated the choosability conjecture for the case of uh, the prime field fp. Uh, which would state that each uh, non singular matrix is uh, k plus 2p minus k chooses. It's uh, not difficult to check that uh, this is the strongest uh, possible statement, which, uh, which may be true. And if we uh, think about the, the balanced case, um, then uh, this means that by k we can go roughly up to p over 2. Uh, so if the choosability version is, is correct, uh, then instead of uh, forbidding just uh, one entry for each of the coordinates of x and each of the coordinates of mx, uh, we can forbid half of the, roughly half of the, of the entries. Uh, of course, uh, this conjecture is, is also widely open. Uh, getting back to the Alonso-Jeffers conjecture, uh, Alon proved that, that uh, if we choose uh, the matrix and randomly, uh, then uh, counter examples, if uh, if they exist at all, uh, are rare. Uh, so the conjecture is what's for, for almost all of, uh, of the large matrices. Uh, while you proved uh, by establishing the results for the uh, permanent conjecture that uh, the conjecture holds if uh, the size of the matrix is uh, not quite large in terms of P. So there is this exponential bound. Uh, so the situation is that if, if there is a counter example, then uh, it, uh, it cannot be very small. The corresponding uh, matrix, the size of the corresponding matrix must be at least uh, exponential in terms of P. But uh, among the, the large matrices, uh, there can be only very few counter examples. Uh, and uh, now I continue with, with our contribution. Uh, so we put with uh, Janos that the conjecture holds if uh, the prime is uh, sufficiently large. Uh, more precisely, if uh, P is larger than 61, but different from, from 79, then uh, the conjecture holds. So somehow for this argument, uh, 79 is unlucky prime. Uh, <laughs> I will show the corresponding lemma from which you can see what is the problem with 79. Uh, in fact, uh, it's related to the fact that it's, it's close to 81, which is a square number. <laughs> anyway, uh, if P is sufficiently large, then uh, the conjecture holds according to the result. And uh, here also, it holds in the slightly more general choosability version in which uh, the, we choose the forbidden values uh, independently for the coordinates of X and MX. So this is not a, a, a big difference anyway. And um, as a small step uh, towards the choosability conjecture, we proved uh, the choosability conjecture for, uh, for K, if K is at most uh, log P over log log P. Uh, once again, the choosability conjecture would mean that in the balanced case, we can go up to roughly P over two, and the along the conjecture K is equal to one. Uh, from our, our argument uh, log p over log p uh, follows. In uh, 
our proof, uh, as it was already suggested by the title, we use grouping identities and also uh, some, some tools from ABD Combinatorics are needed. Uh, so I, uh, I show uh, some grouping identities that, uh, that turn out to be, be useful. Uh, so let's assume that P is a prime which is larger than three and uh, M is a non-similar N by N matrix. I will denote its rows by uh, A1, A2, A to A N, and uh, I will get back to this notation later as well. So I write it on the board. So M is a non singular matrix whose rows I are denoted by A1, A to A N, and uh, the standard basis vectors are denoted by A1, A to A N. Uh, then um, this conjecture states that a certain grouping identity. Uh, over the integers uh, follows from another grouping identity, uh, which is formally exactly the same, uh, but uh, now it, uh, we see it over the uh, time field FP. Uh, so here, let's stop for a while, uh, because here I use this multiplicative notation uh, for, uh, for two things. Uh, so if uh, G is uh, an entity group, and R is a ring, uh, then uh, I write the elements of the group ring as these linear combinations where uh, G is just a formal variable, sign so following the, the multiplicative notation, and the, the coefficients are taken from the ring. Uh, and and uh, addition is defined in the natural way, of course, and uh, multiplication is, is also defined. In the natural way, <laughs> if you don't like the, the multiplicative notation, uh, then instead of R V G V, you can just R V times V. Uh, but uh, I will stick to this uh, this multiplicative notation. So once again, uh, here is the conjecture that we created, <laughs> and um, here the reverse direction is uh, is obvious uh, because if um, in this product, if you expand it out. All the coefficients are equal to zero as, as integers. Then, of course, they are also zero as uh, not p. Uh, but uh, we conjecture that the reverse direction also holds. Uh, so, from the fact that uh, this product, uh, to an effector product, uh, all, the, all the coefficients uh, are equal to zero not p, uh, it, it follows that uh, all the coefficients are, are zeros as integers. And uh, we proved that for, for each prime larger than three, this conjecture would imply the Amon-Joseph Tarsi conjecture. And uh, if P is sufficiently large, then uh, the conjecture is correct. Uh, so we also have the implication uh, for the small primes uh, that are not covered by our proof. Uh, so in those cases, uh, proving the conjecture would be, this conjecture one would be enough to prove the uh, conjecture, just uh, we could not prove it yet. Um, as I have mentioned, um, some, some tools from additive combinatorics uh, are, uh, are also needed in our proof. In fact, uh, our proof is an inductive proof, uh, which makes use of these uh, grouping identities. And then we are pushing through induction. Uh, we need some. Uh, tools from, from additive combinatorics, and, and I thought I would, would mention this because I think uh, some of the uh, some of these might be uh, interesting in their own right as well. And uh, in certain cases, uh, there is some space for improvements. So one uh, type of sets uh, which are very much useful in our proof uh, are these uh, SK type uh, sets. Uh, and uh, we say that the non-empty subset of the prime field FP is uh, SK type. Here K is a positive integer. Uh, if uh, for each element of the set, uh, it is possible to find uh, an arithmetic progression of flags uh, 2D plus 1, uh, sorry, 2K plus 1, uh, in which uh, the middle element is, uh, is A, and uh, the difference of the arithmetic progression is different from 0. Uh, so inside this set A, uh, around each element, we would like to see a 2k plus 1 term arithmetic progression. Uh, and we prefer, if uh, such a set is small, 
because for instance, the OSET FP or FP without one single element would, would be fine. Uh, but uh, we need uh, SK type sets of, of small size. Uh, I'd write SKP uh, for the size of the small type subset. Um, so D depends upon the choice of the element or no D? Uh, D, D might depend on, on, on A, yes. Uh, so the condition is that if I pick an element from the set, then there should be possible to find D uh, such that uh, if I start an arithmetic progression at A with difference D and difference minus D, then the next K terms in both directions should be contained in this set. So for instance, if k is equal to one, which uh, actually corresponds to the case of uh, the analogy conjecture, uh, we, we require that each element of the set uh, should be the middle element uh, of a three element arithmetic progression. But uh, the difference of the arithmetic progression uh, uh, can be different uh, for different choices of, uh, of, the, uh, of the element A. Um, closely related function is, is being NK type, where we uh, keep the previous requirement. So whenever something is contained in the set, there should be a 2K plus 1 to arithmetic progression around it. But um, here we also require something for elements uh, outside of the set. Uh, here the requirement is that if A is not contained in our set A, then there should be a K plus one to arithmetic progression starting at A, uh, such that all the other elements uh, should be contained. Now our set, maybe this one is uh, a bit less uh, natural than, than the previous one, but we, we also need uh, these. And uh, here we also prefer this if such a set is small. Uh, so we write uh, NKP for the smallest uh, such set. Of course, uh, the set should be non-empty. And um, what we need more precisely is that uh, this quantity, so if uh, k is equal to one, then uh, there is no difference between being S1 type and N1 type, because see the additional requirement is that for each A, we should be able to find an A plus D containing the set. And uh, the set A is non empty, uh, so we can always find uh, such a D. Uh, so in this case, uh, S1 and N1 are exactly the same. And uh, what we need, and I will show the lemma why we need this, that this, uh, this quantity should be uh, less than the root of, uh, of P minus one. And uh, this bound holds if uh, P satisfies these requirements and fails to hold if, uh, if P is smaller, if, if P is at most 61 or equal to, to 79. Um, it's not difficult to prove that uh, this, this lemma holds. In fact, uh, asymptotically, S and P is much smaller. Uh, it, it's easy to see that uh, its growth rate is, is at most uh, constant times log to P. Uh, in fact, we can build up uh, a set um, recursively uh, establishing the, the conjecture. Uh, and uh, if uh, we know that for each prime p, we have the bound two log p, then uh, we just need to check the, the small cases. Uh, and here we need to use uh, some computer help. Uh, and it turns out that uh, the bound root p of p minus one holds uh, exactly in, in those cases. Uh, in fact, uh, this question was, was studied earlier, and uh, these type of sets were called uh, balanced sets. And uh, the truth is that uh, S1P is actually one plus slip rule one times log two P. And it's uh, a nice exercise to prove that the that log two P is uh, is a lower bound. Uh, is it just for a random set? Sorry? Does a random set do it? Mm, I don't think so. So you really need to construct something? Yes, I think so. Yes, I, I think the random construction should give something much Verse, but again, well, maybe, maybe there is some clever random construction, but uh, no, no, so it's actually, uh, yes. Um, in, the, in the choosability version, uh, we have the following bounds. 
uh, if uh, p, p is at least uh, k to the constant times k, uh, then we have uh, such a bound. Uh, so here we want to see a 2k plus 1 term arithmetic progression around each element. Uh, to prove this, we gave an explicit construction, but uh, here there might be space for, for improvements. Uh, and uh, for, uh, for NKP, uh, we have uh, this bound, and uh, here we need to use the, the random construction. Uh, it may be possible that uh, this bound uh, can be improved, uh, I mean, the exponent, uh, but uh, the easy application of the, the random construction gives uh, this bound. And uh, just to show where this root of phi minus one coming from, uh, we also use the, the following standard lemma. If we have two bases uh, in FP to the n, and uh, we have subsets of uh, non zero values, ui, bi, then if we have this bound on the product of the sizes of these sets, uh, then we can find uh, non zero residues lambda i. Uh, such that if we take a linear combination of the EI basis vectors, where the X coefficients are coming from the corresponding UI sets, uh, then this is never referred to uh, linear combination of that form, where we take uh, linear combination of the FI basis vectors, where the coefficients are the directed versions of the uh, of, of elements from taken from from the EI. Uh, this is an easy consequence of um, uh, so, so, so the random choice uh, uh, works uh, if we have this bound on the product of the of the size of the sets, and we need to use this uh, during the induction step uh, for the case when the sets A, I and B I are, uh, are S one type. Uh, so the from the previous inequality we get that we need S one P to be less than root of P minus one. Uh, so this is why we we have this requirement. In the choosability version, uh, we need the product of uh, SK and NK to be less than P minus one. Uh, so by improving uh, the, the bounds on SKP and NKP, uh, it, it, would, it, it could be possible to improve uh, the, the choosability statement. Uh, and uh, now I continue with uh, some equivalent forms of the conjecture uh, that, uh, that turn out to be really useful. Uh, so I still use A1, A2, AN for the rows of the matrix N, which is a non-singular matrix uh, over, over FP, and uh, even AN is the uh, standard basis. Uh, and I will formulate several properties uh, that more or less state that the conjecture is false. Uh, so property, property one exactly states this, uh, there is no X in FP to the N, uh, such that uh, X uh, is an over zero vector and MX is an over zero vector as well. Uh, so P1 says that the allogic towards the conjecture is false. It's um, immediate to see that if uh, we can reformulate this in the following way, uh, we take the polynomial, which is the product of the entries of X and the product of the entries of MX. Uh, and uh, if the conjecture is false, then it means that uh, this polynomial vanishes everywhere. Uh, so it's clear that this is an, an equivalent formulation. Uh, with some fully analysis, it can be uh, seen that uh, we still get an equivalent uh, formulation uh, of the following uh, form that a certain grouping element, which is a 2n factor product, uh, is zero the grouping uh, CFP to the n. Uh, so these three properties are equivalent with each other, and the goal would be, be to prove that, uh, that these are false, uh, at least for large primes. Uh, there is also force uh, condition. Uh, and we could not prove that uh, this is equivalent with, uh, with P3, uh, uh, the, but, but it, it's immediate idea that uh, if uh, P3 holds, so the orange, if the orange jet has conjecture is false, then uh, the same grouping element, but also uh, as an element of, of the grouping over FP, 
uh, is, is also zero. And uh, there is a fifth uh, variant that um, I, I won't use uh, in this talk. Uh, just I, I keep mentioning that if we take a look at this polynomial, uh, the product of uh, the entries of x and, and mx, uh, then the degree of its uh, reduced form is less than 2n. Uh, by reduced form, I mean that if we are over f phi and we see an exponent which is larger than phi, then we can decrease it by p minus 1. Uh, so let's do this for, uh, for each uh, of the uh, of the variables, uh, and uh, the first condition states that uh, for this specific polynomial, uh, the degree of this uh, reduced version of f uh, is, is less than 2n. It's a 2n factor product of uh, linear polynomials. Uh, so the connection of between the statements is that the first three are equivalent to each other, and uh, they imply the, the fourth one, uh, which implies the, the fifth one. Uh, so to prove the unusual effects conjecture, it's enough to uh, prove that uh, at least one of them is, is false. And uh, what we prove is uh, that uh, property P4 uh, happens to be false uh, if uh, we have this uh, condition on, uh, on N1P and S1P. Uh, so this statement uh, implies the unusual effects conjecture uh, because P4 was a consequence of P1. P1 says that the conjecture is false. So if uh, uh, P4 is false, then, then, then we are done. In the choosability version, the requirement is slightly different, that we have NK and NK, and uh, also the grouping element that we need to study is, uh, is slightly different. But let's go back to the uh, case K equals one, which is the Arrange RC uh, uh, case. Uh, so if we can prove this, uh, they proved that uh, the Arrange-Jeters conjecture holds. Uh, and uh, they proved this uh, with the help of uh, induction. Uh, let I show some part of the proof. Um, the base case is, uh, is trivial. Uh, we need to check that uh, this product is, uh, is not equal to zero. So if we expand out the brackets, we get uh, four terms. It's not difficult to check that uh, they cannot all cancel out. So something will be remain, the base case is fine. Uh, so for the induction step, uh, they may assume that the conjecture holds, uh, that the statement holds up to n minus one. And uh, for the sake of contradiction, uh, we assume that uh, there is a non-singular matrix of size n by n, uh, such that uh, this grouping element uh, is zero, uh, contrary to the statement. And uh, we want to use the induction step, um, so we need to construct uh, a smaller matrix uh, of size n minus one by n minus one, which uh, which uh, which also gives a counterexample, and then we, we get a contradiction, and, and we will be done. I will show half of the proof, which will actually be the, be the easier half. Uh, so essentially, here we need to get rid of two uh, factors uh, from a two-n factor product. We, to get the twin minus two factor product. Uh, and what I, I won't prove is that uh, if uh, this twin factor product is zero, then uh, it is possible to leave out uh, a well chosen factor in such a way that uh, the corresponding twin minus one factor product is, is already zero. Uh, so this is the lemma in which we need to use all this uh, additive combinatorial machine, machine, machinery that, uh, that, that I mentioned before. Uh, now let's believe that uh, uh, this is correct, and uh, from here uh, I, will, I, I will finish the proof. Uh, so I will prove that this lemma implies the statement, and the statement implies the Alonjijertor conjecture. Uh, so here the index of this virtuous and factor was J. Uh, M is a non-singular matrix, uh, so we can choose an L in such a way that if we leave out the J through and the S column. Then we still get a, a non singular matrix. Uh, let's write the, the row vectors of M in the form of EI prime plus EIL EL. Uh, so we uh, write the, the component in the direction of EL uh, separately. Uh, this way, uh, all these uh, EI prime vectors are contained in the subspace generated by 
uh, the basis vectors, uh, standard basis vectors, with the exception of EL, uh, because that component uh, is is not appearing in, in AI prime. So we have this n minus one dimensional uh, uh, space. If um, I is different from J, then we may write the group ring element one minus G to the AI uh, in, in this form because uh, the difference of uh, AI and DI prime is some constant times scalar times EL. Uh, so if we move this to the left hand side, it can be seen that uh, they can uh, write it uh, as a multiple of uh, one minus G to the EL. And uh, let's write let's this uh, observation into the, the equation that we have. Uh, so we know that this one minus one factor product is equal to zero. And uh, in the second product, uh, in place of one minus G to the AIP, uh, plug in this, uh, this observation. And uh, we assumed for the sake of contradiction that uh, this product is, uh, uh, is zero. If we expand out uh, the, the brackets, then we get that uh, B is a, a linear combination of, uh, of powers of R minus G to the uh, uh, so from So here, from the, from the first product, we certainly get uh, one copy of R minus G to the EL. Uh, that's why we start at uh, Tariq plus one. Uh, from the second product, uh, we may get more copies of one minus G to the EL, we uh, may not, uh, but uh, with R, it suffices to go up to P minus one because the P square of R minus G to the EL is equal to zero. Uh, so we can get more copies, but if you get more copies uh, than P minus one, then uh, the corresponding uh, power is equal to zero. Uh, so B, which is zero, is uh, written as this linear combination. These powers are linearly independent from each other. Uh, so this also implies that uh, B1, the first coefficient is, is equal to zero. So how is it possible that we get just one copy of uh, one minus G to the E as in such a product? Uh, this copy uh, is coming from the first product because that we certainly get one such copy. And then from the second product, we always have to choose uh, one minus G to the AI prime in order not to get more copies. Uh, so B1 uh, may be written this way. Uh, so we obtain that uh, this 2N minus two factorial product uh, should be equal to zero. Uh, but this means that uh, property P for uh, phase to hold for a smaller matrix and for a JL, uh, which uh, Cannot happen because of the induction hypothesis, and uh, now the statement is proved. So G, but when G is the same as FPN in the notation. Um, yes, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. yes FPN. Yes. yes, yes. Oh, oh sorry. FPN minus one. Uh, mm -hmm. Because uh, I, I left out. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Is the, I see. That. Okay. okay. Minus, yes. Yes. FPN minus one. Uh, the, is a subspace which doesn't uh, contain uh, yes. uh, But once again, uh, here I, I left out uh, a difficult part to, to prove that now. In the remaining time, I would show some uh, uh, further applications of, uh, of this technique. Uh, so not of the statement, but uh, the, the technique itself. Um, together with Naya and Tomon, we managed to prove the following strengthening of the analogy Jeffers conjecture. Uh, namely, instead of taking just uh, two matrices, uh, we, can, uh, we can take uh, K matrices. So for the analogy Jeffers conjecture, we had two matrices, the identity matrix and M, and uh, we were looking for an X such that IX and MX are both number zero vectors. Uh, so it's a natural question to ask what happens if instead of taking only two non-singular matrices, uh, we take k non-singular matrices. Um, in our original proof, uh, we 
made use of some duality. Uh, so from the, the original formation, the original formation of the proof, it was not clear uh, that should be that whether the technique uh, could be used uh, for more matrices, but uh, it turns out that uh, for for any k, if uh, the prime is uh, large enough in terms of k, uh, then the consequence, uh, the, the statement is, is true for uh, for k matrices. Uh, so if p is large enough, then in fp to the n, it is possible to find a vector x such that uh, none of its uh, mi images uh, can have any zero entries. Uh, in the direction of the, the additive basis conjecture, uh, we, we prove something which is uh, between uh, the weak version and, uh, and, and, and the general version. Uh, namely, we have the statement that uh, it is possible to choose uh, a subset of uh, FP of size 2 log 2P uh, such that uh, if you take the union of uh, P uh, and in linear basis, then uh, each vector in fp to the n uh, can be expressed as a linear combination of the union of these uh, basis vectors in such a way that all the coefficients are coming from this set of, uh, of size <coughs> uh, so here in the additive basis conjecture uh, we want to use only two coefficients in the weak version we are happy with p minus one uh, we have the statement with two log two p uh, actually, uh, each set which is S one type uh, is, is is fine here, and uh, this holds for for every p which is at least five. If uh, p is three, then there is no difference between the weak and the general version. Uh, if uh, we want to formulate a statement which corresponds directly. Uh, to the case of, uh, of the weak additive basis conjecture, so p minus one coefficients are allowed, then uh, three bases are already enough. Uh, so the weak additive basis conjecture holds, uh, holds whenever uh, p is, is at least five. The, the statement is also related to uh, uh, coset covers of groups. Uh, it's the result of Tomkinson that uh, if, uh, if A is a group and we take an irredundant covering of it by some cosets, uh, by irredundant I mean that if we take out one coset, then it's not a cover anymore. Uh, then the index of the intersection of these subgroups uh, inside the group uh, is at most uh, E to the big O K log K. Uh, in fact, the bound is, uh, K factorial to be, be more precise. Uh, and uh, it's also known that uh, the bound, upper bound of K factor is tight. Uh, if uh, we take the symmetric group, the certain concept cover of it, uh, then uh, maybe have equality. Uh, but uh, we were asked whether we can say something stronger in the case when A is an abelian group. Uh, secondly, even as the uh, whether this bound might be improved to uh, e to the constant times k. And in this direction, uh, we, uh, we gave this improvement instead of log k, uh, we have uh, log log k. Uh, it is easy to see that uh, the bound of type uh, e to the constant times k would be the, the best possible, uh, which, uh, uh, which can hold. And uh, to conclude my talk, I will repeat uh, some of the questions uh, that I said before. Uh, so it uh, would be useful to understand better the uh, growth rate of uh, SKP and NKP. Uh, so in case of SKP, we want to see a 2K plus not a very empathic progression around each element of, uh, of a set. Uh, in fact, uh, for the, the proof that I, uh, kind of explained before, we needed to use that the product of SKP and NKP is less than P minus one. Uh, so uh, understanding from where does this world would, would be useful. And uh, this is the conjecture 
which would imply the analogy of classic conjecture also in the cases when P is between 5 and, uh, and 61. Uh, so if this statement holds, then the analogy of classic conjecture holds uh, for each prime. If P is larger enough, then uh, the conjecture holds. Uh, but uh, if P is smaller than 61, then we do not know whether this conjecture holds or not. Uh, thank you for your attention. Questions? Actually, I have a question. So, so there is this Ellen Tarsi conjecture for Latin squares. You know what the conjecture is? Uh, so, sorry. So, for the Latin squares, yes. the Ellen Tarsi conjecture that if the size of the Latin square is odd, then the the even uh, Latin squares. Uh, our number of even Latin squares is different from number of odd Latin squares. And even Latin square means every row is a permutation of one through n, n is the size of the Latin matrix. <coughs> uh, I mean, uh, Latin square, n is the size. So take the permutation, take the sign, and take the product of all the signs of all the rows. So <laughs> if the sign is plus one, you call it an even Latin square. If the sign is minus one, you call it odd Latin square. Okay. And then Ellen and Tarsi conjectured that uh, the number of Latin squares with even size is different from number of Latin squares for odd size, as long as n is odd. For n even, they are equal. That's very easy to see. So I'm wondering if any of these conjectures has any bearing on that conjecture. Um. Is known right for primes and yes, that's right. Yes, exactly. So, 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 right. So, that conjecture is, is known to be true for prime, and I think two times, huh? uh, no, prime minus one, prime plus one. Plus yeah, yes, there that's right. Plus, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are several. Yeah. No, 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 it couldn't be prime minus one because that will be even number. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so no, there yeah. is, uh, yeah, uh, right. Some. So, for some, some, some primes, it is known. But so uh, I I do not know whether these techniques uh, could be used uh, for the open cases of uh, that one. Maybe no, but uh, I this in this direction. That one is equivalent orientation one. Uh, you mentioned something about your uh, Yes, yes. Uh, I mentioned that uh, it's also not very closely related. Uh, yes. Uh, so there might be some. Connections, but uh, I would guess it's not uh, super strong. Yeah, but but see that conjecture is also very closely related with the GLN representation theory. I mean, you are working with the group ring of this ZPN, and that conjecture is very closely related with the GLN representation theory. You you write down some representation, uh, and then. That conjecture is equivalent to saying something being non-zero. Some 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 subspace you write, and that subspace should be non-zero. Mm -hmm. I I don't remember the precise detail there, but it's very. I mean, it's equivalent to some very explicit GLN representation theory. Mm -hmm. Maybe it seems like a very hard problem, and since you are working with the group ring, I mean, of course, it's very different from GLN. So I wonder if there is really a direct connection. Uh, thank you for mentioning this. We will look at it. Uh... Um, so about S1 of T, is it obvious that this grows with T? I mean, it should, but. Um, I, the statement that it grows might be obvious, and that it's log P to P uh, mm -hmm. almost is. It's not uh, mm -hmm. that, that easy. Uh, that is a very short proof, but it's not that in five minutes uh, one would agree that. I think uh, it's a nice elementary statement. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe proving that it uh, has to tend to infinity should be easier. Uh -huh. uh, so if uh, you gave the statement that it rows rate is data uh, of log 2p to students, then maybe some good students 
would solve it. <laughs> Some others would not. Uh, it's it's a nice exercise. Okay. And another question is hard money. So is there a conjecture of this type for adding a basis conjecture? Oh, okay. Uh, which, which, uh, with this uh, something about group identity is that equivalent to it, basically. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe not equivalent. Yes, there are some grouping identities uh, that are probably close to the beginning. That conjecture, we were experimenting in certain directions. Uh, sometimes we formatted false statements. <laughs> uh, that would imply <laughs> that it is this conjecture. Uh, yes, uh, so we believe something, uh, some idea of, of this kind could probably work there, but uh, we, we could not find right way yet. Actually, I should correct myself. When n is odd, then it's, it's equal, those two numbers, even an odd number of uh, electric squares. For n, even, that's the question. Uh, and uh, so, as you said, I think it was proved for P minus one and P plus one to be correct. Those are the two cases, I think, where it is known, but not other one. What is known about the basis conjecture of your allowed dependency and what's the best dependency? Uh, so, so the for the basis conjecture, okay. what happens if you allow dependency in there? Like, so it's a union of any basis. Uh, Basis, uh, yeah, so there is this constant depending on P, which is a conjecture, but then let it depend on M and then uh, uh, mm. ask for this for double of M. Mm. I, I, I don't know, but uh, yes. Uh, the short answer is that, that I don't know. Uh, there should be better bounds, so there are obviously trivial bounds. Uh, if we also, we are also allowed to use N, uh, but uh, I don't know right now what is a bound which is not trivial, but, but true. Yeah. I think that the best known bound is log N, and it's from oh. no answers directly. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. For the multi matrix version, I think it's the previous slide. Is there a conjecture for the least P for which it holds? Uh, um, actually, no, in fact, uh, even the analogy of the conjecture is open. <laughs> so, of course, the conjecture is five. Uh, and uh, this grouping identity suggests that uh, it would be very unlikely uh, to ever come to the example for P plus five. But for all of these uh, statements, one would expect uh, that uh, if the prime is small, uh, then there can be concrete examples, but uh, from some point onwards that there shouldn't be any. In this uh, multiple version, uh, I have no idea what would be a reasonable conjecture for this threshold. But is it reasonable to expect that P0 grows with K? Uh, yes, yes, um, it should certainly go. Yes, uh, no, no conjecture. Um, um, Do you also have a choosability version for this model for uh, Yes, I think so. We could combine the two. So, instead the SK, uh, what is the definition for SK general? Uh, is the arithmetic progression with multiple generators? What would be the corresponding notion for this function introduced SK of P and K of P? Uh, in this SK of sets. Um, I don't see what could be, you know, SK and K, but from, from the combining the techniques, so these were two generalizations in two different directions, and uh, this should be able to combine. Just I didn't want to. Always uh, formate uh, the thing in the most general way. Uh, so here, um, the interesting point for us was what I did. It, it was for three matrices because we played with duality, uh, and it was unclear 
what is happening for, for stream matrices. There's no further questions. So, so thank you.